Now, as the world moves on to, or rather in the digital revolution, countries are, ever, are contemplating what advances in artificial intelligence will mean for many of their industries, while the prospects for innovation seem endless. Concerns over the adverse impact of AI cannot be understated. But take a look at South Africa's place in the AI race. I'm now joined by the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bladen Zimande. Uh, Dr. Nzimande, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. It's very interesting as well that we have this conversation when um, the man who's been on the, 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 the lips of so many people across the world, Elon Musk, launches his artificial intelligence startup, XAI's Grok3 as well, which he says, uh, in quote then, is the smartest AI on earth. Where does South Africa play when it comes to the AI race? Well, thank you very much, Arabele. Good, 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 good afternoon to you and your viewers and listeners. I think you are asking a very important question. <clears throat> uh, but let me just clarify in, in what capacity I'm, I'm also speaking. The, the artificial intelligence track of government is led by the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies. Obviously, we are very much involved, which is what I would like to talk to you about today, uh, because our focus is more on research and other kinds of support to the artificial intelligence uh, project. So where we are as South Africa, firstly, what I would like to say is that we ourselves are prioritizing artificial intelligence. Because it's very important that as a country we do not remain behind. We may not have as much resources as your Elon Musk of this world have, but we need within our context to focus on artificial intelligence because it is part of the future. Now, what are we doing then? We have a 10-year decadal plan, which is at our plan for science, technology, and innovation in the country, 2022 to 2032. One of the areas that we highlight in that decadal plan, it deals with a number of areas, energy, uh, it deals with climate change, it deals with health innovation, but one of the areas that is part of that decadal plan is digital economy and digital technology and that we are going to be focusing on that as one of the critical areas of artificial intelligence. Now, Aramela, let me just then take you through very briefly what we then are doing. We have got what we call the Center for Artificial Intelligence Research, which is housed in, our, in one of our entities, the Center for... <clears throat> the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, as it is known in short. The aim of this center is to do research in a number of areas where artificial intelligence is applicable in the different sectors of the economy, you know, whether we are talking of automation or the automotive industry, whether you are actually talking of the energy sector, all those key areas of the economy, artificial intelligence is needed. So we have a, a network, a very important network, which is made up of researchers located in 10 hubs, two of those, two, and as an additional two emerging hubs involving nine universities. Of course, our goal is that all our universities should as quickly as possible be able to be involved in one part or more of this area of artificial intelligence. Yeah. Now, just to give you an idea of what these uh, uh, hubs are involved. In. Minister, allow me to interject. I, I, I want to actually know about the, the hubs, but I, allow me to interject just very shortly because I think we're going to miss out yes. on, on what is pertinent as well in the part of this. In this 10-year plan, 2022 to 2032, how much funding yes. has been set aside for that plan? And does it include ensuring that there's education at a, uh, a secondary schooling level, right through to a tertiary schooling level, uh, and growing the knowledge around artificial intelligence further? Well, Aravena, it would be difficult to talk about a budget because there isn't one single budget, precisely because of what we are saying. 
We expect basic education, for instance, to set aside resources to introduce our learners to digital knowledge and to introduce them to basic tools that are important for artificial intelligence, like robotics, like machine learning, those things that uh, are, are very necessary. Also, you will find that other departments in government will be making use of artificial intelligence. For instance, Department of Agriculture to deal with a whole lot of challenges. Our own budget as science, technology, and innovation, not all of it goes to artificial intelligence, is 9 billion rand. We are very clear that this is not enough just for the work that we are doing. But then what the president has introduced, which is important in answering your question, is an interministerial committee which has decided that we need to look at an integrated and related manner in which all departments are spending money on science-related matters. In other words, yeah. we need to be mobilizing the whole of government including also working with the private sector, which also is doing a lot of work in, in artificial intelligence, because that is the only way we are going to deal with this. You don't have a singular point where yeah. there is artificial intelligence. So the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies, for instance, is dealing with the same thing. So we are looking at resources we have as a country yeah. to say how much money do we deploy to science, technology, and innovation and in particular now, to this area that is emerging as very important of artificial intelligence. Minister, what would you like to see come out of it, though? What would the outcomes be? After 10 years, what determines success, then, in having put all this money and research, then, into artificial intelligence? Are we looking at well, we automotive are vehicles? Are we looking at a technology structure that's ultimately better, etc.? Yes, we are not going to wait for 10 years. It's a 10-year project which we say these are the areas we'd like to work in. What we are hoping will happen is that each year or even each six-month period, you are going to be having new things that are actually emerging. Now, artificial intelligence, in essence, it's about using what is called machine learning to actually design machines that are able to do things that in the past we would have said it's only human intelligence that is capable of doing it. Now machines are going to be able to do some of these things to improve productivity, to improve management, even in government for that matter. Let me tell you one of the priorities of government as outlined by the president in the State of the Nation Address is digitization of government. Now that's a huge challenge. We will need artificial intelligence to assist us to better digitize government such that you don't have to go and wait for the whole day at home affairs on something that at the press of the button you could actually get. So that is one area that is there. The area of energy. For instance, now we will need new technologies on how to store energy. I mean, electricity at the moment, fossil fuels, you, you are not storing it. You use it as it comes out, you know, of, of, the, of the big, uh, uh, what do you call these things? You know, uh, the power stations as it come out. But with artificial intelligence, we're going to need new battery technologies in order to be able to store that energy. We need artificial intelligence to come with quicker and better solutions in order to be able to do that. So those are some of the very concrete and practical outcomes. I can mention any area, we are right, about vehicles. For instance, the Chinese are saying now, they are no longer just producing electric vehicles, they are producing EIVs, electric intelligent vehicles, because these vehicles need to be doing a whole range of things that other vehicles are not doing at the moment. They are introducing, of course, like in other countries, self-driving vehicles. You know, I've got my own concerns <laughs> with our own state of I, transport. I, in I, the country. I think especially in South Africa, we'd have many question marks about <laughs> self-driving vehicles, especially. So uh, it would be very but interesting to see something like that. Side, we must get there, despite our 
reservation. I, I think you would then have to speak a lot to the Minister of Police, to the Minister of Safety and, and Security as well in the country. There are going to be many question marks, including electricity itself being one of the key proponents to all of this and how exactly we move along that chain. Minister, unfortunately, that's the only time I have for, for this conversation. I'm hoping that you can actually come to studio. And let's unpack this just a little bit more. It's a pertinent question, especially the globe uh, as it's moving. Um, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So yes. please, Minister, yes. um, I graciously offer you that invite as well. But thank you so much for the time this afternoon. And hopefully we can have this conversation again. Minister Blade uh, Nzimande, there, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, South Africa, in the AI race. Where exactly do we stand? We don't want to fall too far behind, of course, as the world continues to move forward.